Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And it is my pleasure to meet you on this Monday morning, November 22nd. And on behalf of our Dean, Randy Hollerith, as well as our Bishop, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this morning's service of prayer and devotion, that we may have our steps ordered in God's word on this day and in the days yet to come. So won't you join me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we thank you this morning for the delight and the gift of life. We thank you for these moments that are before us. We thank you for all that has transformed and transpired behind us. But we ask now that you would be in the present with us. Bless us. We ask that you would do this in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And for his sake, amen. Our gospel comes to us this morning out of the Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter, and four simple verses which may be familiar to many of you. The first through the fourth verses. For those who have headings within your Bibles and subject headings, it is the widow's offering. And I invite you to hear these words out of the Gospel of Luke. He being Jesus looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. Amen. Every time I read this particular passage, there's all, always a wonder that comes over me. And as I share with you this morning, even my own sense of wonder, perhaps there's wonder that is already residing in you as you hear these words. But the particular wonder that comes over me is how excited do we get at our chances to give versus getting excited about our opportunities to receive. Most of us get excited when someone says, I have something for you. Most of us get excited when someone says, I'm gonna bring you something. Most of us get excited when they hear one say, I bought you something, I didn't bring it with me. Think of the time in between and the wonder that comes over when we talk about receiving and getting. In the world in which we live today, many are so captivated by getting, 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 that we forget about the power that is in giving, about the ability to be able to transform our own lives and to transform others' lives through that heartfelt action and emotion of giving. When we get excited, about receiving something's missing from our lives if that's all we get excited about. The gospel lifts this scene so that we might have to wrestle with the reality of giving and not just the hypotheticals of giving. If we were able to have a richer and fuller conversation about giving, I'm sure many of us would be able to talk about how much we would like to give, how much we desire to give, we would love to be able to say, given the opportunity of meeting someone in need, I would give. We create wonderful hypotheticals in our thoughts and in our minds, uh, and oftentimes that touch our hearts so that we can feel better about our giving. But here in this particular passage, the gospel writer records a actual scene in reality where it's not hypothetical, but Jesus is looking at those who had giving in a way where it didn't affect them, transform them, change them. It, it might be helpful to some, but here's a woman that gave out of her heart's abundance and out of her heart, it touched her hands. It lived in a way that it ought to live in us. Those who give in a manner that it touches our hearts, we give in a way that it transforms us 
just like it may help and transform others. So on today, I wonder if we give in that way and would want to encourage us to give in that way. And many of us would look at the, here, the two coins and limit it to that. But I often remind every, everyone that we speak in terms of time, talent, and treasure. That if we gave to those who we loved, perhaps called someone today, perhaps gave them an encouraging word, perhaps called someone who you may have even division with, that kind of giving can be transformational, not just in your life, but their life. There are those who can give physically and to give coins, who can give monetarily. Maybe there is a somewhere where you can do that, and that's it as well. But even your gifts that sometimes are given to just events that happen in the secular realms of our world, those tangible ways, but we see those actions in divine, the talents and gifts that we have, that we're asking ourselves, how are we giving? Are we giving out of our comfort? Or are we giving that we might transform lives? Speaking of hypotheticals, as you know, I'm always putting it in the form of a story, but I read this actually in one occasion where there was a pastor who went out to the countryside to visit one of the parishioners of his congregation in the countryside in a rural area uh, simply to talk about all that he had and uh, this prized possession of pigs that he owned. But as he went out and just had conversation about him, somehow they got on the conversation of giving. And here, being so prideful about the possessions of these two pigs and uh, the great pigs that he owned, Pastor thought it would be interesting to raise a question with him around the pigs of giving. So he asked him, he said, listen, if you had 100 pigs, would you give God 25? Of course, uh, the property owner, the farmer, and member of the congregation looked back at him and said, sure I would. I'd give him 25 in a minute. Well, the pastor looked back at him and he said, if you had 20 pigs, would you give God five? He said, of course I would. That would be nothing. I, I, I would give him those five pigs, gladly donate those pigs. Well, the pastor looked at him one more time and he said, if you had two pigs, would you give him one? The owner of the property looked back at him and said, oh, wait, wait a minute, pastor, you know I only have two pigs. It revealed in that moment that his giving was based in hypotheticals, but not based in reality. Many of us base our giving in that way. And on today, I pray that we would live our lives, be disciples of Christ, not just with the hypotheticals, but with in the reality in which we live and with the actions that change our lives. Amen. I invite you to join me in that prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we go about our day on today, I pray today that you will bloom where your feet are planted and that you will be a blessing in reality to everyone who crosses your path. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen.